Hey everyone, so I just kind of wanted to take a moment and chat with you guys about the book and what it's about before you grab your copy. So um, this, first things first, start with the title, Beneath the Makeup. Why makeup? Why am I the makeup girl? Um, so makeup itself is preconceived as something to hide underneath, you know, something we use to cover up. Well, as you read through the book, you'll kind of understand you'll you'll come to understand that makeup and i we have history we we have a relationship and you know she's um she's even taught me things about myself and she's been there when you know other people weren't and when i had no one I know you're probably like, oh, well, you just, you needed better friends, or oh, you were just a snob, and you, you know what? Yeah, I was a snob. It's the second one. I was, I was not a good friend, and I say in the book, you know, I was, I was a friend out of convenience. I was not a great person. I picked up on some very bad habits, younger on, and you know, I just, I chose to let people influence me in a bad way, but that's not on them. That's on me. Um, you know, and that's, that's another thing, the, the stories, they're my own personal stories in the book. Um, don't worry, I didn't use any names. There's no real names in the book apart from one, my husband. Um, I do reference my parents, but, um, uh, these things, they really did happen in my life. And there's a lot of things that people don't know about me. There's a lot of things people do know about me. And then, and then there's definitely one thing that only two people on this entire earth know, and that's me and my husband. So it, um, it, this was hard, okay? This was hard to write. <laughs> but um, it was necessary. It was my therapy session you know this this book wasn't what it is at first um not by a long shot this book was an apology letter you know and i was i was writing i was reliving all of these memories and you know just apologizing for it and finally was like what are you doing you know it's like you're you're better than this you you have to be better than this and you have to show people that you are and they can be too and they can overcome everything from their past so that's why the book is what it is it is a guide to better what lies beneath your surface what the hell does that mean okay so um surface I say surface to be nice, but what I mean by surface is a facade. It's a front that we put on, you know, it's what we want people to see. It's the exterior image, you know, everyone else's view of us, our pretend selves, our fantasy, our fantasy selves. It's not who we are. So what this book allows you to do, what it guides you to do through exercises, which I say right out the gate, in order to benefit from this book 100%, you need to do the exercises. You, you're gonna need a pen and a paper. Um, don't be like, oh, that's too much work. Like, no, it, trust me. You're not gonna remember if you just think about it. You're not. You need to write all this stuff down because what it's gonna allow you to do is really you're gonna have everything laid out in front of you. You're gonna see every ugly truth about yourself. And you're gonna get to decide if you want to be that person on paper or if you wanna change who that person is and be better version, be a better version of you. And that's what this is about, is to discover, is to discover if you're unhappy is to dis discover why you're unhappy, is to discover if you're 
a decent person or a really shitty person, you know, is to discover all these things about yourself, whether you're good, bad, or just fugly, like I was, fugly, effing ugly, <laughs> you know, and, and not as an ex, in an exterior way. This has nothing to do with looks, guys. This book has nothing to do about the exterior of ourselves. It's all about the inside. It's all about what's underneath everything that we put out in life as a front. We can't do that anymore. So that's what this book is gonna help you to do. It's gonna guide you in that direction. And like I said, if you truly want to benefit from it, you will need to bring a pen and paper to the workbook. And you know, I mean, with me, uh, any kind of self-help book, I'm sitting there and I, I got a highlight. And then, you know, for, um, you know, my Girl Wash Your Facebook by Rachel Hollis, that thing is all highlighted up. Same thing with her second one in that series, Girl Stop Apologizing, it's all highlighted up. And in my notebook, I have sections in my notebook that have some exercises that she tells us to do. You know, I sat there and I read and I wrote and I read and I wrote and it helped me. It was so much more beneficial than just like, oh yeah, thinking something in my mind. You truly have to see it to believe it. Um, another thing, you know, it's self-help. A lot of people don't think they need to better themselves. Like, oh, I'm fine where I'm at. Everything, everyone, you know, with everything and with everyone, there is room for improvement. There's still room for improvement with me. You know, there's still room for improvement with the best person on this earth. There's always room to grow and we always want to aim to grow and achieve and just keep successing on. So if you walk away from this book and you're totally offended and you're totally mad at me and you think I'm a lunatic and I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm um, just a slut that had some bad things happen to her in high school. Well, one, that's your opinion and you can leave your negative thoughts to yourself. No need for bad reviews. And number two, that just means that you're not ready. And more importantly, you don't want to be helped. You're not ready to be helped and you don't want to be helped. And that's perfectly fine. No one's judging you for that. But if you don't come out of this book, like, yes, hallelujah, amen, sister, you go girl, you're so right, like this, I'm feeling this. You just weren't ready for it. And that's okay, because there may come a day in time where you open it again and you're ready and you just, you let it fill your cup. Um, so I also want to talk about a little bit more about the stories. Um, you know, you, you're going to have to remember that a lot of these things, um, I'm young, I'm 26. Okay. And a lot of these things happened when I was younger. My first story, I'm in preschool playing in the rocks and you're like, oh my God, this is so juvenile. And this is something that has like cringed me about this book is that I'm like, oh my God, no one above 21 is going to want to read my book. Well, you just gotta get past like chapter nine or something. <laughs> no, but seriously, I uh, I go back so young because something happened when I was younger. And it just kind of shows you how impressionable kids are and how one thing, one, whether it's traumatic, where it's great, whether you know it's misconceived, misconstrued, one thing can set the course of someone's entire life. And that's what happened with me. And it wasn't a bad thing. It was just how I interpreted the situation and what I did from there and what I kept doing and how I kept interpreting certain things and how, oh, I didn't want this to happen to me. So I, I did it myself so it never happened again. Stuff like that. Um, But, you know, from the stories, I tell them and I list you a lesson. There's 20 life lessons in here that are very beneficial that everyone needs to know. 
even if you already know them, but don't necessarily really understand or do them in your life. You know, like li live by them is what I mean. Um, so I tell it to you, I tell you about the lesson, and then I tell you how rise above it. I tell you how all these memories have haunted me to enough to where I put myself in a dark place and how I rose up, how I stood above it all, how I'm still standing above it all and how I just, I let all the bullshit go. And y'all, that's what we have to do. We just gotta, we can't let our past define us. We gotta move forward. And if you need exterior help to do that, like I'm totally the one to help you. Y'all, if I could, if I could write, I need to put this on my list of dreams. If I could write, like a Q&A advice column. Oh yeah, I think I can do that every day. I'm so much better with Q&A. Like I had to ask myself questions. I have like a list of stuff like in this, <laughs> in my notebook to, to go over, you know, I'm, I'm just better in that format. Um, yeah, so personal stories, no real names. There's life lessons, you need to be interactive. Oh, yeah, and so this is a lot to take on. This is like, <sighs> you might be like crying. You might be cursing me out. You might be doing all kind of things that you didn't know you were doing, that you didn't know you were capable of. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. So I give you coping mechanisms, and then you're going to think, oh, yeah, she really belongs in the mental ward. Um, because <laughs> you're gonna be like why is this girl talking about a teddy bear why is she talking about mermaid tail blankets all this crazy stuff i'm telling you throughout the book and it's a coping mechanism because you're gonna need it and it doesn't have to be those things i don't want you to think like oh i need to go out and buy all these things if i don't have them to cope no find find your own things to cope but it's it's to show you that you're gonna need to hold on to some stuff at first to calm yourself down and be able to move forward. You m might even be able to find that through your, your dog or your significant other. Whatever it is, it might be a movie, okay? Or it might be a Build-A-Bear like one of my teddy bears. It's totally up to you what that coping mechanism is, but I give them to you and I give them to you good and a lot. Ooh, I feed you. I feed you real good in the beginning and then I slowly start taking them away. By the end of it, you don't have them anymore, honey, because you don't need them. And then by the second book, which I know we ain't even there yet, but by the second book, I'm like, uh, yeah, you don't get none. We passed that. You don't get out of it. <laughs> Just kidding. But I, I think it was a really important part, and it gives it, it gives it humor that it was needed. That's another thing. I really hope y'all, y'all, uh. <laughs> Y'all understand my humor, and I hope y'all understand that I'm not fussing at you in this book at all. You know, so that's why I wanted to do an audio version um, so that y'all could really hear my emotions and my voice and how I'm saying everything. Um, this is not to fuss, this is not to bash, it's not to criticize, it's to help you. And I'm helping you by coaching you and by showing you, like, laying it out to you raw and true. That's mainly it, you know, and I say in there, like, the truth really hurts. No one wants to be told that they suck as a person, but if that's what's going to wake you up to be the best you, then you need to hear it type of deal. Um, I thought of something else. Oh, yes. So, about the bashing part in these stories. Um, it's not to bash anyone. People have wronged me, but I've wronged them. And that's what you have to remember. This is my story, my side of it. There's always two sides. Um, I'm not doing this to hate on anybody. I'm doing this to show you that I have wronged them. The lesson I've learned from wronging them and how I've come out on the other side to not do it again. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm sorry for what I did. And I let it ruin my life and I felt guilty. Y'all, like, I got my karma. You ain't got to worry. Anybody who I've hurt, you don't have to worry. 
it came around, honey. It did. Okay? It totally did. Mm. A little moment there. So, I really just wanted to prepare y'all for what you're about to dive into before, you know, you go ahead and go on these sites and grab your copy. Um, so, it's in two places for right now. I might expand it later on. If I do, it'll be ebook and audiobook versions. Um, we're not doing the audiobook right away. If we do, well, if or when we do, um, it'll be released at a later date. My audio editing skills aren't great. As cute as my little audiobook closet is, like my recording studio is, it, my editing skills aren't where they need to be uh, for me to professionally release this, for it to sound great to your ears. Um, so I either need to harness those skills, like tone them up, lock them in, or I'm going to have to professionally hire someone to do it for me. So we're going to play around with some options, but hopefully in the future, there will be um, a way for you to listen to me read you the book. And I would love to do that. Um, so ebook, you can get on Amazon or Barnes and Noble for right now. Um, We might venture off into iTunes and Kobo, Kobo a little bit later. Um, so about the ebook, don't stress if you don't have a Kindle for Amazon or a Nook for Barnes and Noble. You don't need one. You can simply download the app to your phone or your tablet and you'll be able to download it and read it from the app. Super simple. Um, they're both available for, for pre-order on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Paperback will be launched on Amazon on June 3rd is not available for free order. I wasn't able to get it like that, um, to set it up that way. I'm not, not sure what happened. It was a mishap. It is what it is, but June 3rd, you'll be able to get your paper back on Amazon. Um, Barnes and Noble has all three versions of the book. Like I said, ebook and then paperback and even a hardcover. You know, when I was, when I pictured my book being sold, I was like, has to be in a hardcover, has to be in stores. If it ever goes to shelf, has to be a hardcover. Like that's just how I envision it. So I was like, I don't care if I don't sell a single hardcover copy of this thing. I want a hardcover, I want to look at it. And that's how I envision it, so I'm doing it. <laughs> it didn't cost me any money to do it. I just, you know, just made it and there it was. Um, so yeah, um, all three versions are available for pre-order right now on orangenoble.com. Um, I do highly recommend you grab your copy off of BNN because they have really great author incentives. They really, really do. Um, so I'd love your help in getting some really great incentives for me. Um, it would be a dream come true to eventually have my book in a store on a shelf. Yeah, that's that's how great I can win a book signing and a chance to have my book sold in stores. So that would be absolutely wonderful. I mean, you could help me achieve that dream. Y'all, the sun is going crazy. So I'll take a look at this cover one more time. That is a picture of me that's me in the makeup. And don't worry, your copy will not have this stripe. This was, um, I don't know, what's it called? Just a, it was a proof. It was for me to approve it and to be like, yep, yeah, we can go ahead and do this. So yeah, that's that's my spill. I'm so excited, y'all look at this. I'm like, this is, this is me. This is me, this is crazy. So I hope y'all enjoyed this little chat. Um, I hope this video actually scares you yet excites you because this can be, this can be super scary, but I don't want to scare you away. Just remember like I'm there the entire time to hold your hand. You just like, you know, when you shout on Facebook, like, oh my God, girl, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there for you in a heartbeat. Okay, you don't gotta worry. Okay, 
Well, that's it. And make sure to grab your copy, whether it's a pre-order now or on June 3rd. You won't regret it. And if you do, remember, you're just not ready for it yet. Okay? And that's all right. That's totally all right. No one's judging. And if you don't see it like that, that's okay too. Just keep all the negative energy at home. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening.